Hi, my name is Veli from Greenwood Solutions. Today's video is on volt rise from the perspective of a commercial solar system. The grid voltage levels vary throughout the day, depending on how much power is being drawn from the grid. Also, how much solar is being sent back to the grid. For energy to flow, the voltage at the inverter must be higher than at the grid. And issues can occur when cables haven't been sized correctly. If there's too much resistance in the cable, then voltage has to rise to compensate. From a volt rise perspective, it's the AC. We are not talking about the DC side of things. It's purely on the AC. In Australia and New Zealand, we have a standard AS4777.1 and it stipulates a maximum volt rise of 2%. Now, this is from the point of supply to the last inverter and the distributor requires this information and the installer must assess the existing cable and do the necessary calculations and this will determine any new cabling that's installed. So, how much is this volt rise? Well, effectively, we're talking about 400 volts with three phase. So that's 400 volts times 2%. Ta-da! We have eight volts to play with over the whole run. We will assume a 100 kilowatt solar system. And this is 100 kilowatts of inverted capacity on the AC side. And in this case, we're gonna use four 25 kilowatt inverters, just to make things easy. So we're talking about volt rise, and remember, some important figures, 400 volt nominal for three phase uh, commercial solar systems, we have 2%. That means we have eight volts to play with over the entire length. So first thing, we are talking about from this point here, all the way over to the last inverter, and that inverter now, if you had multiple inverters, you'd be doing the calculations on the largest capacity inverter that's furthest away. Okay, so, first thing is to ascertain what the cable is and can it carry the current, in our case, of about 144 amps per phase. And from the AS3008 table, we found that the 95 mm cable that we looked at could carry 217 amps, so no problems on the current carrying capacity of the cable. Then we look at the run of the cable and that's where we do our volt rise calculations and we also look at the millivolt per amp meter rating of that 95 mm cable. We do that, we found it was 5.58 volts on the right volt rise. And then we do the calculation here, and if I remember it was about, can't remember, 0.58. Very short run, 10 meters, using 70 mil cable. Okay, so we still, um, the full, remember we're looking at the full amps through here, right? because this is what we're talking about, the inverters, and there's four of them, remember it was 144 amps, all of those inverters, right? Current carry capacity for the last section of cable, 10 mil, carries 50 odd, what was it, 59 amps I believe. We do the volt rise calculations, it came in well under that eight volts. So, methodically, current carry capacity of the cable, yeah, tick. Volt rise, yes, tick. Current carrying capacity of cable between the MSB and the PVDB, tick. Volt rise, tick. And then the last section where the inverter, or in this case inverters, connects. The same size cable can have a different current carrying capacity. Also it depends on the cable type and the proximity to other cables, method and location of the installation. Table seven, column 24 in AS3008 assumes a certain cable type installed in a certain way. The example they give is not worst case scenario, but it's pretty close, so it's conservative. It is up to the installer to assess the cable situation themselves. Different cable materials 
different current carrying capacities, different installation locations. According to the referenced AS New Zealand 3008 table, 95 mil cable can carry 217 amps, so all good in this respect, because how many amps were we supposed to carry? 144. But this is not all. Now we have to look at the voltage rise calculation. Now we go back to AS4777.1, which now references another table, again, AS3008, so we're going backwards and forth. This time, it's a different reference, it's table 41, column six, where we look at the volt drop factor. And in this case, it is 0.449 for the existing 95 square mile cable. So the calculation is volt drop slash volt rise, now mathematically they're the same thing, is the length of the run, L, times the current, in this case 144 amps, times the millivolt per amp metre volt drop rating for that cable, in this case 0.449 millivolts per amp metre, divided by 1,000, and la la, the volt rise for this section from the point of supply to the MSB is 5.58 volts. Gee, we've used a lot already, haven't we? So the volt rise is 5.58 volts for the point of attachment or point of supply to the MSB. As a percentage, this is 1.39%. So from the MSB to inverters, we've effectively got 0.61% to play with, or 2.42 volts. Uh-oh. Be prudent, make sure you understand AS4777, and also get really familiar with AS3008. Conclusion. Australian standards stipulate a max 2% volt rise from point of attachment or point of supply to last inverter. Your job is to calculate the volt rise for every section of cable run. Cables selected also have to have an adequate current carrying capacity. Try saying that quickly. Have to derate for heat due to installation location and method, and power factor may have to be factored in. Thanks so much for watching today's video on Volt Rise. My name's Veli from Greenwood Solutions. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, please feel free to contact us and please hit that subscribe button if you see fit. Thanks very much.